Now that we've wrapped up several different types of voting, I want to transition to talking about what's called weighted voting. As we answer the question, what is weighted voting? And this video is going to have a lot of vocabulary in it to kind of set up our discussion of weighted voting. And uh, ultimately, we're going to be interested in a weighting voting system, who has the most power and how much power they have. But before we get there, we need to have a good foundation of vocabulary and understanding of the notation. So first, let's define weighted voting. The idea of weighted voting is different voters And actually, in weighted voting, we often call them players. Have different influence. And that influence we call the weight on the outcome. The idea is some people's vote might count double or maybe one and a half times another person's vote, depending on the situation. And some vocabulary to help us here as we talk about these weighted voting systems is first players. A player is an individual casting a vote. And the weight you could think about as the number of votes a player gets. And as they vote, we're ultimately going to be interested in finding this thing called the quota. The quota is the minimum weight or number of votes for a proposal to pass. And kind of a subscript on quota is it must be at least half of the votes. Otherwise, you could have quota met both for and against a proposal if it was less than half of the votes. In addition, it can be no more than the total number of votes. Otherwise, you would never be able to reach that quota. And there's some notation that we're going to use to represent a weighted voting system. In a closed bracket, we're going to have a Q and then a colon W1, comma, W2, comma, W3, comma, and so on to the last W. I'll call it Wn. And in that notation, the Q is the amount of votes needed for quota. And W1 is the weight of player 1. W2 is the weight of player 2, etc. So let's take a look at an example using this notation. Let's say a company has three shareholders. The first has a 40% share. The second has a 35% share. And the third 
has a 25% share. And let's say for a motion to pass, Sixty percent approval is required. And so if we set up a notation to represent this voting system, we'll do an open bracket. And the first number represents the quota. And if we think about a percentage as a vote, 60% or 60 votes is required to reach quota. And the first player gets a 40% vote, the second 35, and the third 25. And this way, we can see how much is needed for quota and what each individual player has for their weight in the election. Let's try and build one from some given information. Let's say a committee. has four representatives from management. And three representatives from the union. And for a proposal to pass, it must have four members support it. With at least one from the union. And we're going to try and build uh, the correct notation to represent this weighted voting situation. So one guess might be if four votes are needed to pass, four might be a good quota. And then we give each person one vote, the four managers and the three representatives. So we've got four managers and three from the union. The problem with this, though, is the four managers could vote as a block, and they would achieve your four weight. And so they've achieved quota. So that guess won't work. So maybe we can try something else. Maybe if we gave more weight to the union, maybe we give each manager one vote and each union member two votes. And because the management together is four votes, we might think, OK, we'll make five quota. Because then with the five being quota, the four managers can't pass a resolution. Well, the problem is, is the three union members could pass it, because they would have six votes. They've met quota with just the three of them. And we said it must have four members. So that one doesn't work either. So maybe we might guess, OK, let's increase the weight of each vote. Let's give the union or the management two votes and try giving the union three votes. And again, we don't want management to be able to pass a bill. So management is 2468. So maybe we set quota at 9. But again, we've got the same problem. The three union members can meet quota. And we said you have to have four members voting in order to reach quota. So that doesn't work either. But let's continue with this pattern. Let's just up the weight of everybody one more time. And we'll give the management three votes each, and the union four votes each. Now, 3, 6, 9, 12, management has 12 votes. So if we go past that to 13, 
management alone can't pass a motion. Also notice that the union members alone, 4 plus 4 plus 4, is a weight of 12. The union can't pass without a fourth member joining them, one of them from management. So this looks like an appropriate weighted voting system to represent this situation. Four votes are required for a movement to pass, and one of those votes must be a union member. Now, what's interesting in weighted voting is certain people have more influence over the outcome. And we're often curious how much influence they're able to wield. And so it begins this discussion that's going to dominate the rest of our conversation about weighted voting over several videos is this question of power. Who has the most power? How much power do they have to influence outcomes to get the result that they want? And one uh, interesting uh, vocabulary around power is that of the dictator. A dictator is a player whose weight is equal to or greater than quota. Example of that would be quota is 10. Player 1 gets 11 votes. Player 2 gets 3 votes. Player 3 gets 2 votes. Notice player 1 here. We'll notate it P1. Player 1 is a dictator. Because whatever player one wants, player one gets. If player one is in support of a motion, it'll pass, because player one is more than the required weight. And if player one doesn't want something, player one can vote against it, and everyone else can vote for it. Three plus two is only five. They still can't pass something without the dictator's support. The dictator is in charge of everything. Now, we don't usually end up with dictators in weighted voting system. But sometimes we do run into situations where some people have veto power. And that person with veto power is the player whose vote is needed for quota. A person with veto power can't reach quota by themselves. But no one can get to quota without this player. Let's look at the weighted voting system where 8 is quota and 6, 3, 2 represent the players. Notice without player 1, no motion can pass. Player 1 could work with player 2. Player 1 could work with player 3. Either one of those combinations gives you a weight greater than 8. But 2 and 3 working together, player 2 and player 3 working together cannot make it to quota. If, if player 1 does not support the motion, it doesn't pass. Player 1 has veto power, always needed to meet quota. What's interesting is if we have a weighted voting system like 16 for quota and then 7, 6, 3, 3, 2, this one you'll see without player 1, no motion can pass. Because if we add up everything else, 6 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2, that's 15. It does not make quota. You need player one. Player one has veto power. But what you might also notice is without player two, no motion passes.
because 7 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 is 15. That is short of quota as well. So player 1, without player 1, you can only get 14 votes. Without player 2, you can only get 15 votes. You're short on quota without player 1 and player 2. In this case, both player 1 and player 2 are needed to reach quota. Both of them have veto power. We also have dummies. A dummy is a player whose support is never needed for quota. For example, with the weighted voting system of 10 for quota and 7, 6, 2, quota can be achieved with player 1 and player 2. Never do you need player 3 in order to reach that quota of 10. Player 3 can support it or not support it. It doesn't matter. It's not going to influence the outcome. So the only way to reach quota is with player 1 and player 2. The last player, our dummy, player 3, is never needed. Continuing our discussion on power then, we're often interested in when different players join together to form what's called a coalition. A coalition is a group of players who decide to vote the same way. And this is really important as we discuss power, because if some players have more power, weaker players can join force to gain power. And ultimately, we're interested in not just coalitions, but winning coalitions. Is a coalition which meets quota. This group of people can vote together to ensure victory. For example, in the voting system 14, 11, 7, 5, and 2, we could come up with several winning coalition. Let's see. If player 1 and player 2 voted together, we'd have 11 plus 7, which is 18 votes. That's a winning coalition. If player 1 votes with player 3, we would have 11 plus 5, 16 votes. That's a winning coalition. But if player 1 combined with player 3, 11 plus 2 is only 13. It's not a winning coalition. Let's see if there's any other two-person winning coalitions. If we do 7 plus 5, that's 12. That's not going to be enough. 7 plus 2, 5 plus 2. All the other combinations of two players are not enough votes for a winning coalition. But we could do three-player coalitions. Player 1, player 2, and player 3 voting together is 11 plus 7 plus 5 is 23 for a winning coalition. And we could actually do player 1, player 2, and player 4 together. That's 11 plus 7 plus 2, which is 21 votes. Nope, that's 20 votes. Sorry. That reaches quota. And in fact, if the last players join together in a coalition of 3, player 2, player 3, and player 4, that would be 7 plus 5 
plus 2, which is 14 votes, which meets quota. And of course, if all the voters vote together, player 1, player 2, player 3, player 4, that gives us 11 plus 7 plus 5 plus 2, which is 25 votes, which is also a winning coalition. So we've got several winning coalitions here. One, two, three, four, five, six different ways the votes could be combined to give us a winning coalition to meet that quota of 14. And in fact, as we build these winning coalitions, you might have noticed some of them are repetitive. Once we have player one and player two, for example, tacking on extra votes to player one and player two is going to give us a winning coalition. But really what mattered was player one and player two had to be there to really reach that winning coalition. Which brings us to another idea that's going to be useful as we discuss power. And that is this idea of who is a critical player. A critical player is a player in a coalition who is needed for the coalition to reach quota. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy down that same example we just saw the 14 for quota, and then 11, 7, 5, and 2. And then I'm going to list out all the winning coalitions we found. We found six of them, player 1, player 2, player 1, player 3, player 1, player 2, player 3, player 1, player 2, player 4, player 2, player 3, player 4, and player 1, player 2, player 3, player 4. Those are the six winning coalitions that we found. And we're going to determine which of these players are critical. Critical means if I remove them, they no longer reach quota. So with player 1 and player 2, what you'll notice is player 1 alone can't reach quota. Player 2 alone can't reach quota. So it turns out that both are critical. And I'll go ahead and circle them. If player 1 was removed, player 2 wouldn't receive quota. If player 2 was removed, player 1 would not receive quota. Same thing with combining player 1 and player 3. You notice player 1, if removed, player 3 at 5 votes would not make quota. Player 3, if removed, player 1 alone would not reach quota. So both are critical here as well. But now let's look at the next coalition. With player 1 and player 2, if I removed player 1, we would just have 2 and 3. 7 plus 5 is 12. We do not reach quota. So player 1 then is a critical player to this coalition. But what happens if I remove player 2? Then we have 1 and 3. 1 and 3 would give us 11 plus 5, which is 16 votes. 16 votes does meet quota, so therefore player 2 is not a critical player. What if I move player 3? Now we're left with 1 and 2. Notice 1 and 2 give us a total of 18 votes, which does meet quota. So player 3 is also not a critical player. This means player 1 is critical. But the other two players are not critical in this coalition. The coalition could survive without one of the other two. We'll do a similar thing on the next coalition. When we do 1, 2, and 4, if I remove player 1, we're just left with 2 and 4. 2 and 4 can't reach quota by themselves. That only adds up to 9. 
So player 1 is critical. If we remove 2, we have 1 and 4. 11 plus 2 is 13. That does not reach quota, which means player 2 is critical. We can't reach quota without player 2. But what if I remove player 4? If I remove player 4, players 1 and 2 alone, 11 plus 7 is 18. They could reach quota without player 4. So player 4 is not critical. So here, players 1 and player 2 are critical. What about the next example, 2, 3, and 4? If I cut 2, we're just left with 3 and 4. Well, 3 and 4, 5 plus 2 is 7, and we don't reach quota. That means player 2 is critical. We can't reach quota without player 2. What if I cut player 3? That leaves behind 2 and 4. 2 and 4, 7 plus 2 is 9. We still don't meet the quota of 14. So player 3 is needed in order for this coalition to meet quota. What if I cut player 4? Then we just have 2 and 3, which is only 12 votes, which means player 4 is needed to reach the quota of 14. So all three are critical. In this last coalition, though, if I removed player 1, we have 2, 3, and 4 together. Adding those together, we get 14, which is quota. We don't need player 1 in this case. What about player 2? If I remove player 2, we have 11, 5, and 2, which is 18. We can reach quota without player 2. So that's not critical either. Player 3 leaves us behind with 1, 2, and 4. That's going to give us 20 votes, which meets quota without player 3. So player 3 is not critical in this coalition either. And if we remove player 4, we have 1, 2, and 3, which is much more than the 14 needed for quota. So player 4 is not critical either, which allows us to conclude in this case none of the voters are critical. And where we're going is we're going to be interested in how often someone is going to be a critical player in a coalition. Because if you're a critical player, you suddenly have power over that coalition. Because without your vote, a motion cannot pass. And then you can use your power to maybe accomplish some of your own personal agenda. But before we get into really measuring power and how much power different players have, I want to give you a chance to practice with some of this vocabulary, some of the notation, and identifying things like dictators, dummies, critical players, veto power players, and the like. So go ahead and practice some of these. And in our next video, we'll actually look at measuring how much power our players have.